All right, guys, what's up? Is MasterCard's multi-token network going to be using the XRP ledger public or the private ledger? Could use Ethereum, it could use other ledgers, but I think we have some very obvious signs that MasterCard is going to be using the public XRP ledger to settle transactions on the multi-token network. Now, if you're a deep researcher in the XRPL community, comment down below let me know what you found as far as the mastercard multi-token network now this video is going to be a little different because yesterday's video i told you i was going to leak this study session from the private group this right here is the embedded video in the private group we're about to start the video but before i start the video if you are interested all the links are below to join this private group we have the Academy tab where we're teaching DeFi. We're building portfolios in the portfolio building sessions and in the study sessions. This is where you're going to get content like this daily. We do explore XRP Ledger, but I think, and hear me out real quick before we start this video. When you go shopping for something like, let's just say a car and you've been thinking, I want this certain kind of car. You start seeing that car everywhere. You start mentioning it, mentioning it to your friends or your family, might show them a picture of the car. So when you're coming back to the mind of a financial institution or a medium large enterprise such as MasterCard, when you're looking in the market to figure out what blockchain you're gonna be settling transactions on for your new multi-token network for CBDCs, NFTs, RWAs, you might be telling your friends and family about some of the blockchains you've seen or some of the blockchains you're looking at, right? So we're gonna study a little bit of the multi-token network and we're gonna connect the dots between two separate documents that MasterCard has put out. So without further ado, I'm gonna take this away. I'm gonna full screen the video. It's up all the way. We're gonna turn the music down. I'm gonna minimize myself and we're gonna play the video. I hope you guys have a good, a good time watching this video. Like I said, this is leaked from the private group, the study session tabs, MasterCard multi-token network. Hey guys, what's up? Quick study session. Just found something interesting. I'm listening to the HBAR Bull. This is a HBAR focus channel. Basically the same setup that I have is only focused on Hedera network. And so to, uh, you know, really get a lot of Hedera info wrapped up into one punch. I like to listen to the H bar bull on YouTube and he's interviewing David in CEO and co-founder of a fresh supply company. They're a company that uses Hedera for supply chain tracking and they're he's talking to the HBAR bull about how they're using MasterCard for some of their payments and transactions. And he's interviewing him because they use Hedera for supply chain tracking, but he's talking about using MasterCard for payments, uh, not just any payments, but token-based payments, right? And so, and this is going to give them interoperability um, with other blockchains and things like that, different forms of payments that they'll be able to accept for the fresh supply company. And he started to talk about MasterCard's end called the multi, uh, the multi token network. And I was like, wow, I did not, I did not know MasterCard had a, uh, multi token network infrastructure. And so MasterCard's ready to go with central bank digital currencies, normal payments, and they have made a way for uh, almost like an interledger protocol, if you would, um, for MasterCard. And Mas they're using MasterCard's multi-token network to facilitate payments, whether it be with a token, with an NFT, with a CBDC, or with fiat. And immediately I was like, okay, let me look into this. Let's find the documents. Right. So I found the documents, 33 pages 
Um, as you can see here is unlocking the potential of digital asset innovation, building a MasterCard multi token network. This started in July, the white paper, and they're fairly far along with it. And so I started reading through it and I'm not going to read a whole bunch to you today, but specifically this thing is to bridge the gap, right? Bridge the gap between blockchain and uh, traditional finance and where it gets interesting is when they start to talk about the conceptual overview of the multi-token network from the user layer, right? The retail customer from the wallet that they're using could be, a, uh, uh, including NFTs and other forms of utility, collectible tokens, payment tokens, the institutional layer, uh, banks and licensed fintechs or virtual asset service providers, which we know that this, uh, you know, Ripple is a VASP and a lot of them are getting that license to be able to engage in this market. Then you have under that the MasterCard multi-token network. Then you have the settlement layer. Now the settlement layer could be a private blockchain such as those underlying CBDC or bank value transfer networks, a public blockchains such as ETH mainnet and a legacy settlement infrastructure including card, real-time payments and ACH network so i wanted to look into here i'm like what private blockchains are they talking about because central bank digital currencies are on their way public blockchains see it's plural here such as the eth mainnet so such as it means more blockchains than just that and so what we're looking at here is they have multiple different ways that they can handle this so honestly it's a good way for it to scale too Obviously, some of the credentials are compliance, regulatory compliance, very obvious, the onboarding of the users. And you can see here, if Alice wants to purchase an NST or an NFT, or Alice sells an NFT, Bob is buying it, their banks, right, are now in the way between the blockchain and the user. And so they are using the multi-token network to facilitate this transaction. The multi-token network is using a public blockchain to settle. Now I went through here trying to figure out what blockchain that could be using. The only one I've seen so far is Ethereum, uh, but it says blockchains, right? Plural. And you know, I got to thinking, um, have we seen any any type of proof that MasterCard might be working with Ripple or anything like that, where can we really get this? And so they have, if you think about it, MasterCard deals with a lot of fintechs, right? A lot of fintechs because they are issuing their cards to multiple types of fintechs, blockchain provider, wallet providers. Now we're seeing MasterCard partner with Algorand wallets. We're seeing them partner with um, multiple wallets. And so I think they're using their multi-token network to facilitate these payments, right? So when we talk about paying with debit cards that are linked to our crypto wallets, they're more than likely routing this through this multi-token network. And so our job would to be find out what private blockchains they could be using, what public blockchains they could be using, what CBDCs are going to be flowing through this network. And uh, so, but, you know, they, they have different versions of it. Some with stablecoin transactions, some with CBDCs, some with NFT transaction settlement on public blockchains, um, private blockchains. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of it. And so these are all proofs of concepts at the moment. And so their path forward, beginning in the UK, right? Because we're seeing a lot of these MasterCard opportunities start in the UK because the UK has the Mika compliance or the Mika regulations already live. Says the goal of this work is to power the evolution and adoption of accessible and consumer friendly blockchain based payment systems with embedded security, trust, and compliance. We're excited to welcome traditional players, digital asset native innovators, and regulators into this environment as we pursue the MTN vision 
of unlocking the opportunities of digital assets by delivering a safer, more secure ecosystem for all parties. And so they talk, start to talk about the role of the public sector, right? And that would be your ripples, stellars, and things like that. And so um, a little bit of speculation here. They're talking about stablecoin issuers, tokenized deposit issuers, central bank currency, uh, digital currency issuers, and uh, regulation on digital assets, uncertainties around that. Somebody's car alarm's going off. Sorry for that. And so I did find another document by MasterCard talking about they're going over CBDCs, stable coins, remittance payments, cross-border payments, and all that. And lo and behold, who do you see? Ripple is stellar. You got UPI here, PayNow, MoneyGram, Western Union, Thunes. Uh, all these are Ripple partners. Obviously, Stellar XLM here. Another ripple for central bank digital currencies may help move money. And so, you know, if they said Ethereum and others, um, and I'm not relying completely on this document just because they showed Ripple and Stella here, but it shows you that they're probably, they're probably, right? They're probably that. This was released around the same time as the multi-token purpose or the multi-token network. And so as we see Ripple's vision and Ripple's roadmap to gaining adoption by these enterprises, these fintechs, these institutions, they're supplying the needs of them, right? Now, a lot of other blockchains are supplying the needs of retail, and that's why they're getting a lot of these speculative pumps. But the companies that supply the needs of institutions and also are supplying the needs of retail, i.e. XRP Ledger, Ripple, Stellar, XLM, Hedera for that matter, um, institutional DeFi purposes, payments, uh, tracking of you know markets and market making infrastructure. These are the blockchains that I believe are gonna become those multi-trillion dollar blockchains. And this is why I'm invested in those blue chip ecosystems, right? And uh, the way I diversify and the way I like to get a lot of exposure to these assets is to also look into their ecosystems and invest in some of the top projects building out on those ecosystems, right? For Stellar, for instance, you have Velo, you have Stronghold. Uh, for XRP, you have Root Network, you have Axelar, Flare, Zahao, Corium. Um, you know, that is exactly the strategy here. And I'll tell you what, guys, I think we are going to win big uh, in this market. I, I know we are going to win big in this market. Um, and lately, because of Flare Network, and I'll go ahead and tell you guys this, because of Flare Network, I've been considering having a small amount of Bitcoin just to have the FXBT. Uh, Bitcoin is the most liquid asset in this space. Um, and listening to Gary Cardone lately, and don't take this lightly, it takes a while for me to change stances on something. Uh, but the way that they have linked the Bitcoin mining industry into the energy grid industry. If you look into that, it actually makes sense. And that to me would give some, I know energy is not tangible. I mean, technically you could touch energy. It would shock you. But if we see regulations come and they regulate Bitcoin mining to where the Bitcoin miners have to be in some kind of partnership with local energy companies that are supplying energy back to the grid using Bitcoin mining. I think Bitcoin uh, might have a bigger place in the future than we've all been thinking. And, uh, you know, we have to learn how to adopt and, and evolve through 
new understandings and new learnings. Now, I've never held Bitcoin. I've only ever really held XRP and various projects similar. Uh, but I've always said XRP is a conduit for value. What is value? Value is energy. And so if Bitcoin is able to basically become backed by regulatory compliant energy use cases and it gets brought onto these types of multi token purpose networks and it is being transacted and settled on ledgers like the XRP ledger that are conduits for energy then I think we have the recipe here for a completely new financial system. Bitcoin being the digital gold, the store of value, XRP being the conduit of value, uh, still would probably eventually become number one in forms of utility and adoption by institutions. I think we might be onto something here, guys. I think we might have cracked the code tokens like xrp xlm that are bridge currencies they transfer value it's very hard to measure their value because they are the measurement of value itself and so that's kind of where i'm thinking right now i'm going to continue meditating on this and researching and getting to the bottom of it because I'm not saying I'm going to go out and buy a whole lot of Bitcoin. Um, but having that exposure to an asset that pumps when the world seems chaotic and it has some form of backing and regulatory clarity, I think I might be a player uh, because I understand ledgers like the xrp ledger are going to be able to transfer it around the world atomically right that 10 to 45 minutes you have to wait on bitcoin is not atomic in my opinion it's same day settlement but when we talk about a hyper connected world and everything's transacting at the speed of light bitcoin's blockchain doesn't fit the need. And that is exactly why David Schwartz and some early Bitcoin developers broke off to create the XRP ledger. And they said the initial use case for the XRP ledger was for transferring things like Bitcoin at the speed of light. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I will see you on the next one. All right, guys, what do you think? What do you think? Comment down below. Comment down below. Let me know. Do you think the fact that MasterCard and their other documents where they're promoting what's happening in the fintech space, in the blockchain space, in the cross-border and payments and remittances space, they want to mention Ripple. They want to mention Stellar. They want to mention Stellar Partners, MoneyGram. They want to mention Ripple Partners, UPI, the faster payment networks. Central bank digital currency providers. I'm telling you, when, uh, this is context clues, right? We can only speculate on this stuff using context clues. Comment down below. What do you think? I hope you guys enjoyed this leaked video. Like I said, everything is in the link in the bio, all the, the community and the educational resources. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew DeVilbus. This is the DeVilbus Capital Allocators channel. We're a private focus group focused on the XRPL uh, ecosystem and surrounding blockchains, utility enterprise blockchains. And uh, yeah, like I said, all the links are below. I'll see you guys on the next one.